Hello and welcome to Peak Studio's tutorial on creating a guest book part one. In this part of the tutorial we're going to show you how to create the front end of a guest book. So we're going to want to put a few components up there that are going to use the insert and the select statements using the PHP MySQL component. So I just opened up a folder called guest book and it's the folder that will be created when you unzip the guestbook.zip. As you can see, there's two files in here. This first file, guestbook.txt, is just a simple SQL statement. This will create your table and give it three fields, ID, name, and message. The only thing you need to do is create a database for that to go into. If you go to your MyPHP admin area and click on your database, then click on SQL, you'll be able to add this in right there. So the second thing you have here is your guestbook FLA, and I've got that open already. When you get the file, you'll see that it has no code on it. It's just a background on one layer and all of your controls on the other. So to get you familiar with the controls, I'm just going to open up the properties here. The first one is your entries underscore text, and that is a regular text area. Then you have your your text input, and this one first one is name underscore text. The second one is comment underscore text, and that is a, a input text as well. Then we have a piece of dynamic text with that's white, and it's called error underscore text. Finally, we have a button that's called submit underscore button. So now that we know where all that stuff is, let's create our PHP. And as you can see, your PHP was created now. Let's open that up. When you open your DB Connect file, I just use Notepad because it's such a simple file. The first thing is, is your location of your database, then your username, password, and finally, the name of the database. Once you have all that stuff filled in, save that and close it. Then we can just go back up one level. We can go back over to Flash now. We can get into our actions. So I'm going to select the actions layer. Open up my actions panel. Select AS2, since this is going to be an Action Script 2 file that we're working with. I'm going to paste in the import class. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to call the first one SGB underscore and make a select statement. I'm going to paste, oops, I'm going to paste that in. As you can see, now we're running everything inside functions for you. Um, this is your return function. We separated it out from the function that actually calls the select statement and everything with the class. So now that it's in functions, it makes things a little bit easier for you. Um, I found that we were moving our code around a little bit at the bottom there because we wanted to make a function all the time for this select statement. So um, the first thing we need to do is call the table, and that's your GB. Next, we're going to call our table fields or table rows. The first one was ID. The second one is name. And the third one we want to pull in was message. And then I need to make sure to renumber that new array piece that I copied in. For this example, we're going to be able to ignore the rest of these fun these arrays because we're not going to use their functionality. Now the text area that we're calling was entries underscore txt. And we just want to add a little bit of formatting at the end, so we're going to add a space in between each word and we're going to have each variable come back. So as it goes through all these different, those three different variables, it's going to list them and then put a space after them. So now I just want to copy this line a little bit because after each entry, I want to cause a carriage return. So I'm going to put that line of code right there. Now we need to kick off this event once, so I'm going to grab up the function up at the top, add a few more lines down here paste that function in, put a stop function after it. So now we have our whole select statement done. 
but the one thing that we still need so that we can see all of the data that you're putting in is a way to put the data in. So we're going to make an insert statement really quick here. As you can see, it's in two functions. So we know the table is GB. It's rows or ID, name, and message. And then now with an insert statement, we want to put in the values of each of these items that we're inserting. So the first one is going to be zero for the ID. The ID is actually using an auto increment in the database table. So it's going to automatically get the next available number.